Practice transfers often so that you become proficient at the task before you try to lift a resident. Practice lifts from bed to wheelchair or chair and from chair to bed. Read and understand the owner operator's manual. Safety is most important when performing lifts and that includes your safety. Always use good body mechanics. Keep your center of gravity low and use your leg muscles. Separate your legs to establish a broad base of support. Keep your spine in natural alignment and never twist while lifting. Always inspect the resident's sling before using it. Check for wear, tears, and loose stitching. Bleached, torn, cut, frayed, or broken slings are unsafe and should not be used. In the Care's Get You Up Stand Up Lift is a valuable tool for transferring partial weight-bearing residents as well as those that need rehabilitation support. The Get You Up makes it easier to assist most residents from one seated surface to another seated surface. Invicare stand-up lifts are made up of three assemblies, the base, the mast, and the boom or lift arms. The base rides on four low friction casters for easy maneuverability. It has a foot plate and two easily adjustable and locking legs. They can be opened and closed by using this padded shifter handle. To open the legs, grab the steering handle with one hand and the shifter handle with the other hand. Push the shifter handle to your right to lift the locking pin from the closed nesting position on the base. Turn the handle clockwise until the locking pin drops into the open nesting position. When this happens, the legs are open and locked. Make sure that the locking pin is properly nested. It's very important that the legs be fully opened when lifting a resident. If they're not, the lift won't be able to achieve proper weight distribution and balance, and that can result in an injury. To close the legs, just reverse the process. Grab the steering handle with one hand and the shifter handle with the other hand. Push the shifter handle to your left to release the locking pin from the open nested position. Then turn the handle counterclockwise until the locking pin drops into the closed nesting position. The next assembly is the mast. Here you'll find these ergonomically designed push handles. The hydraulic pump assembly, which does the lifting. Notice that you can rotate the handle from side to side. Very convenient. And the contoured knee pad assembly, which is adjustable to three comfort positions. The mast also has this badge, which lists the unit weight capacity for a quick safety reference. And finally, attached to the mast are the lifting arms. It's to these arms that the sling attaches. They secure onto one of these three knobs. If you're lifting a tall person, someone over 5 feet 10, then use these knobs on the end. If you're lifting a person of medium height, someone between 5'6 and 5'10, then use the knobs in the middle. And if you're lifting a shorter person, someone 5'6 or shorter, then use the knobs closest to the mast. Although one lift works for multiple residents, it's recommended that each resident be issued their own individual sling that corresponds to their size, medical condition, and the type of transfer that they require. Invicare slings are constructed of soft, durable, solid fabric with padded areas for extra comfort. They feature multiple hookup loops so they can be adjusted to the resident's body size. Standing slings are for residents who have both neck and head control and can support the majority of their own weight. They provide support from around the torso. Transfer slings are for residents who have neck and head control and can support at least a minimal amount of their own weight. They hook under the resident's legs and support the torso. 
When selecting a sling, be sure to consider the resident's weight and their ability to bear weight. Always check with a physician before selecting a sling. Although Invicare lifts have been designed so they can be operated safely by one caregiver, it's recommended that two caregivers perform all resident transfers. Before you attempt any kind of a lift, make sure that you understand the resident's limitations and ability to assist with the transfer. It's a good idea to communicate with the resident throughout the process. Let them know about each step before you perform it so that the resident is comfortable. If you explain each step as you work through it, your resident will learn the routine and become comfortable with it. Let's watch some typical transfers using a stand-up lift. Before performing the lift, Make sure that the bed is at a safe working height for the caregiver. Next, get the resident in a seated position on the edge of the bed. Place the standing sling around the resident's torso. Put it around them so the sling label is on top facing the caregiver and the inside where the belt is located is against the resident's body. Position the sling so that it is at the base of the spine and under the arms to a point just below the shoulder blades. The resident's arms must be outside of the sling. Buckle the belt around the resident's waist. Adjust it for a snug but comfortable fit so the resident won't slide out. Then, while one caregiver stays with the resident, the other moves the lift into position. To safely perform any lift, the lift legs must be in full open position. To open the legs, grab the steering handle with one hand and the shifter handle with the other hand. Push the shifter handle to your right to lift the locking pin from the closed nesting position on the base. Turn the handle clockwise until the locking pin drops into the open nesting position. When this happens, the legs are open and locked. Make sure that the locking pin is properly nested. Happen is when Jennifer brings in the lift, I want you to try and have the resident the put their feet on the foot plate. Do that for me? Okay. Assist them okay. if they need help. Sure. Yep. All right. Roll the lift into position and stop once their knees are securely against the knee pad. Adjust the knee pad to a setting that will be comfortable for the resident and give them the support they need. With both hands, pull these adjustment pins out and hold them out. This allows you to position the knee pad to the height you want. When it's at the proper height, release the pins so they seat in the alignment holes. Make sure that they are both seated properly. Attach the sling to the lift arms. The straps on the sling have a series of color-coded loops sewn into them. Use the same color loop on both sides and choose the loop that most comfortably attaches without too much slack. Attach the sling to the appropriate attachment point on each lift arm. This patient is 5 feet 9 inches, so the medium attachment points are used. Attach the strap from the outside of the lift arm. Attach the same color loop to both arms and make sure the loop is attached so that it rests flush against the attachment spindle and clear of the attachment knob. Instruct the resident to hold on to the hand grips on both sides of the lift. Relax and to lean back into the sling. Turn the control valve clockwise. Use the handle to give the lift a few pumps. This will elevate the lift arm slightly and provide a bit of tension to the sling. Before going any further, double check the attachment points to make sure they're properly secured. Once you've verified this, you can raise the resident above the surface of the bed, just high enough so they clear the surface with their weight fully supported by the lift. This technique results in a lower center of gravity, which makes the device more stable, easier to move, and enhances the resident's sense of security. 
Use the push handle to maneuver the lift away from the bed and slowly move the resident to the commode. Position the resident as far over the commode as possible. Prepare the resident's clothing for toileting. Turn the control valve counterclockwise. This releases the pressure and the lift arms will lower. Unhook the sling from both attachment points. Lift your feet up. Have the resident lift their feet off of the foot plate. Move the lift safely away from the resident. Once toileting is complete, instruct the resident to put their feet flat in the foot plates as you roll the lift into position, stopping once their knees are securely against the knee pad. Attach the sling to the lift arms with the same loops used earlier. Instruct the resident to hold on to the hand grips on both sides of the lift, relax, and to lean back into the sling. Turn the control valve clockwise. Use the handle to give the lift a few pumps. This will elevate the lift arm slightly and provide a bit of tension to the sling. Before going any further, double check the attachment points to make sure they're properly secured. Raise the resident above the surface of the commode. Perform any necessary hygiene tasks with their weight fully supported by the lift. Adjust clothing for transfer. Use the push handle to maneuver the lift away from the commode and slowly move the resident to the bed. Be sure that the bed rail is down and the bed is at a safe working height. Position the resident's leg against the bed. Turn the control valve counterclockwise and the lift arms will lower. Unhook the sling from both attachment points. Unbuckle the waist belt. Okay, you want to lift your feet up? Ask the resident to lift their feet from the foot plate and pull the lift away from the resident. Remove the sling from around their torso. Then, have the resident swing their legs over the bed. Help them if necessary. Begin by positioning the two chairs as close to one another as possible. Lock the rear casters on the recliner. Lock the wheel locks on the wheelchair. Move the front riggings out of the way. Position the bottom edge of the sling at the base of the resident's spine. Make sure the labels are upright and facing out. Lift up one of the resident's legs and put the thigh support under it. Make sure the fabric that is against the resident is smooth. Pull the thigh support until it reaches completely around the patient's thigh. Do the same for the other leg. Be sure that the sling is clear of the wheelchair's front corners. Prepare the lift for the move by opening the unit's legs to the maximum open position for stability. To open the legs, grab the steering handle with one hand and the shifter handle with the other hand. Push the shifter handle to your right to lift the locking pin from the closed nesting position on the base. Turn the handle clockwise until the locking pin drops into the open nesting position. When this happens, the legs are open and locked. Make sure that the locking pin is properly nested. Position the lift in front of the resident. We'll have, to get your legs on this. have the resident put their feet on the foot plate. Assist them if they need help. Move the lift in until the knee pad is resting against the resident's knees. Adjust the knee pad if necessary. With both hands, pull these adjustment pins out and hold them out. This allows you to position the knee pad to the height you want. When it's at the proper height, release the pins so they seat in the alignment holes. Make sure that they are both seated properly. Turn the control valve counterclockwise 
and the lift arms will lower. Pull the thigh supports forward and attach them to the forwardmost attachment points which are located above the knee pad. Make sure you attach each strap to the lift using the same color loop. Attach the top straps to the lift arms. Use the same color loop on both sides and choose the loop that most comfortably attaches without too much slack. This will make sure the resident stays comfortable and stable during the lifting process. Attach the strap around the lift arm from the outside. Make sure all loops rest flush against the attachment spindles and are clear of the attachment knobs. The resident's arms should be outside the sling. Instruct the resident to hold onto the hand grips on both sides of the lift and lean back into the sling. Turn the control valve clockwise. Use the handle to give the lift a few pumps. This will elevate the lift arm slightly and provide a bit of tension to the sling. Before going any further, double check the attachment points to make sure they're properly secured. Raise the resident above the surface of the wheelchair just high enough so they clear the surface. Raising them any higher with this type of sling can result in injury. Their weight is now fully supported by the lift. Using the push handle to navigate, slowly move the lift away from the wheelchair and toward the recliner. Position the resident over the recliner. Release the pressure in the pump by turning the control valve counterclockwise. The lifting arms will lower. Unhook the sling from all four attachment points. Lift the resident's legs and pull the lift away from the resident. Very comfortable here. And remove the sling from around their torso. Like any skill, the more you practice, the better you get at it. Practice transfers often so that you become proficient at the task before you try to lift a resident. Read and understand the owner-operator's manual. Safety is most important when performing lifts, and that includes your safety. Always use good body mechanics, keep your center of gravity low, and use your leg muscles. Separate your legs to establish a broad base of support. Keep your spine in natural alignment and never twist while lifting. Always inspect the resident's sling before using it. Check for wear, tears, and loose stitching. Bleached, torn, cut, frayed, or broken slings are unsafe and should not be used. Document everything. The type of sling and its condition. The status of the resident before and after the move, the preferred transfer method, resident compliance, and the length of time out of bed. Invacare lifts are designed to preserve the dignity of your residents while reducing caregiver injuries. They're reliable, safe, easy to use, and offer maximum comfort to the resident. Invacare lifts and slings, the best in the industry.